All right, we've been talking about portraits, self-portraits, a picture that you create of yourself. Step one, our person needs to have a head. We'll do this by thinking of the letter O, not just any O though, a capital O, like an oval. Our next step will be eyes. When you add in eyes, make sure that they're not up too high. If they're up too high, there will be no room for your forehead or your hair. If they're too low, you won't leave enough room for your nose and mouth. You want your eyes to be almost in the middle. Almost in the middle. I'm going to put a line so I don't forget where my eyes are going to go. We're going to do easy eyes this time. We'll do curved line. curved line. We got to finish it off though. That's just half an eye. Curved line. Curved line. That's a good start. But there's more parts to our eye than just two curved lines. We've created eyelids, but there's pieces inside. The black circle in your eye that's your pupil. It's a hole that lets light through your eye so that it can hit your optic nerve so that your brain can process things like colors and shapes. Every person has two pupils unless if you have a rare defect that some people have where they have more than one pupil in one eye. It doesn't happen very often but that's okay. Around your pupil you have an iris, the colored part of your eye. It's like a circle inside of a circle. Finish off this one. Those are some pretty good eyes. For your nose, next step is going to be nose. We're going to go simple with this nose. You can either choose to do it this way or you can choose to do it a different way, but I'm going to go simple with this. I want you to think about the letter J. Not just any J though, a capital J. Think about a capital J. Think about the bottom part of the J. How it goes down and then curves around. That's how I'm going to do my easy nose. We don't get into fancy noses until middle school. But for now, this nose will do just fine. Mouths. Now that is a fun, fun thing to do because mouths are very expressive. They can say a lot. They can show a lot. Hmm. If I was going to draw a mouth on my person, if it's a happy person, I might try and draw a smile. Oh, my paper's trying to get away from me. A smile. That's a pretty good smile. What if it was a super, super happy smile? We could make that happen. Aha. Uh -huh. We could even show some creases on their mouth because they're smiling so big. If your mouth is open, don't forget the inside parts of your mouth. An open, gaping mouth looks really, really weird when there's nothing inside of it. You can give yourself a tongue. Bloop, bloop. You could even give yourself teeth if you wanted to. Da, 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 da. Oh, this looks like SpongeBob teeth. Awesome. Hooray, a mouth with something inside. But you don't have to do a happy mouth if you don't want to. You could put a really bored mouth. You could even put an upset mouth. You could make mouths that convey all different kinds of emotions. If you saw a mouth like this, I'm going to bring my inside parts. That looks like a mouth that's screaming or maybe even singing. 
If we were singing properly though, you know you have to have proper lip action. We could sing like this with a tongue and a little googly back there. Da 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 da. You could make your mouth any way you want. I'm gonna give my person lips. If you're giving someone lips, not someone, your portrait. If you're drawing lips, a good way to start is in the middle. So we gotta figure out where the middle is. We need some lips that go up and then down, up and then down. Your lower lip is much easier. It's just a curved line. But then we need our inside bits. Ta-da, wonderful. People have ears. It's one of the most outstanding adaptations that we've had. Ears. We're going to line it up with our eye, eye to the side of our head. It'll look kind of like a C. Your ear can either curve back in like a C, or as you line it up with your eye and draw in the top part, when you get to the bottom, you can just snake it back into the side. I think I like how these look just a little bit better. So I'm going to go back and make this one match this one. Ooh. That looks all right. Moving on. You do not just have a head floating in space. You have wonderful little bits of anatomy, that's body parts, to keep things in the right places. First little bit of anatomy we're going to focus on is our neck. Look at the people at your table. Most necks are more narrow than faces. So a person's neck isn't going to be as wide as their face. It's going to be more narrow. <coughs> more narrow. Not as wide as their face. It'll be more narrow. So underneath our face, we're going to start with two lines that are sort of kind of straightish. Sometimes they'll flare outward like that. But I'm going to just do straight for now. And it's more narrow than my face. A neckline. You're all wearing clothes right now. You all have a neckline. But we're going to do an easy neckline for today, because this is just a practice. It'll be a curved line from one side of our neck to the other. We're going to curve it down. Da -da 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 -da. Neckline! Some more about anatomy. People have heads, they have eyes, they have noses, they have mouths, they have ears, they have necks. Your neck is important because it supports your head on top of your shoulders. We're going to draw some shoulders in here. I'm going to come up on my neck just a little bit. Because our neck doesn't just sit right on top of our shoulders. We have muscles and things to hold it down. So up just a teeny bit on my neck. I'm going to slant it down just a little bit. There's one shoulder. Up just a little bit on my neck. Slant it down. There's my other shoulder. But we're not just heads and necks and shoulders floating in space. There's more to us than that. We can add in our sleeves. It'll look like a triangle going from one end boop, boop, to the bottom of our page. Going from the other end boop, boop, to the bottom of our page. This is the start of your self-portrait. This is a pretty good practice. From here, we need details. Lots and lots of details. People have eyebrows. Some people have thick eyebrows. Some people have thin eyebrows. I'm going to give my self-portrait some eyebrows. Those don't quite look like mine, but I'm okay with that. Eyelashes. If you're a girl, you probably have some pretty long eyelashes. If you're a guy, you still probably have eyelashes. Eyelashes. They always curve away from the middle of your face. So let me show you what I mean. If they were curving towards the middle of your face, they would look like this. 
but that's kind of scary. Eyelashes curve away from the middle of your face. See how the curve is away from the middle instead of towards the middle, if right here is the middle? Yes, curve away from the middle of your face. I'll fix this side a little bit. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Curving away, curving away, curving away, curving away. That looks pretty good. If this is a guy, we're going to give him some hair. It doesn't matter if it's a guy or a girl. We're going to give our portraits hair. Sometimes, girls' hair covers up their ears. If you're a girl and your hair covers up your ears, awesome. Sometimes, guys' hairs also cover up their ears. If your hair covers your ears, that is also awesome. I'm going to show you both ways. If you're a girl, no. Let's take a step back. Hair. Hair always has texture to it. Curly, straight, wavy, all textures for hair. If this was a guy and he had curly hair, you know, we got to give him a hairline. Hairlines don't completely cover up your entire forehead because you know you have eyebrows and you have a little bit of skin right there. We can't cover up the entire forehead with our hairline, but we are going to give this guy a hairline. Unless if your hair <coughs> is cut very, very, very short to your scalp, your hair usually will add some width to your head. It sticks out from your head. If this is a guy with curly hair, my lines are going to be kind of curly, kind of wavy, and it's going to come out larger than his head. You see how it's larger in this original oval that we drew? Texture. We can create texture by repeating certain kinds of lines. If we got curly hair, we're going to have some curls going on in his hair. That looks pretty good. Maybe his hair even covers up part of that ear. There we go. We got some curly headed dude. If you're a guy and you have straight hair, that's not too difficult. Ooh, what if it's a guy with bangs? Hmm. Let's try with straight hair first. Ta -da. That looks okay. Moving on to girls. Girls are all about their hair. I don't really know why. I never really understood it, but that's okay. Hmm. Let's see. Is your part where your hair goes from one side to the other? Is it in the middle? Is it on the side? Who knows? If you're not sure, put your hand on top of your head. There's usually a line on your hair where your hair parts. I'm going to do a side part on this person. That's where my hair is going to part. If it's straight hair, it'll just come down kind of straight. But you know, we got some hair on both sides of our head, right? Hair. What if it's curly hair? We could make that happen. Ooh, curly hair with the middle parts. Yes. That looks okay. We could even add some more texture to it. So it looks even more curly. That's pretty nice. Oh, we could do something with this part though. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. What if you have braids, though? We could add some braids in here. Still have a hairline. No matter what your hair is, you got a place where your hair begins and your forehead ends. That place is called your hairline. Some people's hairlines go straight across. Some people's hairlines dip down like that in the middle. Either way, everybody has a hairline. It's something you're born with. Some people get fancy lines cut into their hairline. Some people, what is it called? Edging? Edging where you get your edges all evened up and stuff. But we're going to go all natural. 
we're going to leave our clippers at home and we're going to have beautiful beautiful hair let's see braids 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 here's my idea for some braids I know that braids happen in lines you have like lines of braids that's a decent start but we need some texture X's I feel like I can hear it right now but Miss Lawson what if my hair isn't fixed like that and that's okay draw your hair however it's fixed could add even more braids you can even add some beads and stuff all kind of stuff you could do whatever you want with your hair what if it's not braids like that what if it's not box braids or cornrows or whatever it is what if it's a different kind of braid your hair is still probably going to be pulled to a certain to a certain place here's a big big braid yeah big chunky breed wonderful Ooh, what if she has earrings then give her earrings goofy what if he's wearing a hat okay then give him a hat Yeah. Do whatever you want with your self portraits. Let me take that back. Don't do whatever you want. Add details that make it look like you. I'm wearing glasses. So if this were my self portrait, it would probably have some glasses. Maybe your self portrait is wearing a bow. Maybe your self-portrait has a mustache. You can add whatever types of details you want to your self-portrait. But self-portraits tell stories of people. They tell stories of people. So however your portrait ends up, it's like a story that you're telling to whoever looks at it. It's the story of you. It's who are you? What are you about? What kind of things do you enjoy? How do you like to wear your hair? We're looking at narratives with self-portraits. 